are you willing to give? I mean, this is a personal question for you. Given that uh, former Senator Bongbong Marcos's numbers are quite high in the surveys, and you do have a sector that seems to want to move forward and hear what he plans to do, are you willing to give him a chance? Yeah, I mean, all these candidates can give their platforms, no? Dalawa ang palag ng criteria ng potante. The first is, of course, a pro-people platform. Very crucial yan. So we need to listen to the platforms of the candidates. But the second is track record. For me, Bongbong Marcos, whatever his platform is, immediately disqualifies himself with track record. Look, during, uh, I'm not only saying that uh, during martial law, the sins of the father cannot visit the son. No, we, Bongbong Marcos is being made to account for his actions. You know, he thwarted the return of ill-gotten wealth, billions and billions of people to the Filipino people that could have alleviated the poverty of the people. Yan sana yung ayuda, yung hundreds of billions na yan. Eh, no, no, he thwarted it. Anong klaseng presidente ka? You thwarted the return of billions of pesos to your people? That practically disqualifies him para sa akin in terms of drug record. So he cannot claim that this is the sin of my father. No, no, no. Ang problema sa kay Bongbong Marcos, lahat ng achievements, ng alleged achievements ng tatay niya, kiniklaim niya because he has no track record to speak of anyway. Pero pag human rights but, violation... But he was a local he, government, to be fair to Bongbong Marcos, he was a correct. local government official wherein his constituencies do speak of his track record in his home province. Correct. He was part of the martial law government. He was governor of Ilocos Norte. He was not a kid during martial law. And there were petitions against him from, from Pudno ng Ilocano, meaning real Ilocanos, uh, just recently, because there were human rights violations committed in Ilocos Norte. I mean, there are many arrested. I know people ng Ilocano na, you know. So he, that's one. Second, during, March, during EDSA, he was wearing fatig uniforms, ready to shoot at Filipinos who are demanding that uh, Mar President Marcos step down. Is that, the, is that somebody who is innocent? No, no, no. The, those are the actions of a man. President, how are you willing to shoot at Filipinos or demanding? So if if the, you yeah. become a senator, what would you do based on your convictions today? Oh, a lot. Uh, of course, the plot in terms of health, talaga. health is one big That's thing. But, but if, in terms of clearly, you have a very strong opinion. Yeah. Convictions on the Marcuses. What oh, would you do if you were a senator? Well, you would be working with Senator Aimee Marcos. That's one. Yes. Yes. Well, there were instances when uh, sa Congreso naman ang mga Marcoses sa lower house, but we have to file the bills we need to file. For example, one of the main reasons why the, sec the next generations failed to appreciate what happened during martial law, the Philippine government refused to teach the next generation of what happened during martial law. They did not fail. They refused. So would so, you make that into, would you yeah. file a bill on that? Yes. It's part of, history and truth cannot be a, uh, cannot be just uh, uh, subsumed by political propaganda. It must be there. Somebody said, I think the Secretary of Education, history should be objective. But telling about martial law is objective because it's reality. Eh? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, all the millions of people pala who, who ousted Marcos were just uh, you know, personally interested people. Na walang, uh -oh. It's a heroic deed of the people and it must be recognized by history and the international community. So I would push for that, of course.